Welcome back everybody to Brisket Medic. I hope you all had an amazing Christmas. If you're watching this uh, on the day it came out, Christmas was just last week, and I hope you and your family had an amazing, blessed time. If this is your first time watching, please consider subscribing, hitting that thumbs up, and sticking around. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing a cook, but that's not the emphasis of today's video. You've noticed in the past uh, six months or so, I've gotten a Old Country Pits Pecos smoker, and um, if you own one of these, you know that um, the quality is eh. Uh, the quality of materials is pretty decent, but the quality of the build is kind of a CSC so-so. And um, there's a little bit of flaw in the engineering as far as airflow, convection, and things like that. And if you watch people like FitzQ or Raleigh Smoke or people like that, you've seen different things and innovations, innovations that they've used to improve those things. And I've tried a few of those things. Um, and I'm going to try some more today, uh, and I've changed up a few of those things um, to even things out a little bit more. I'm going to move the camera over so that you can see my Pecos. You're going to see immediately some things that I've done, and uh, we're going to walk through some of those things before we get a fire started and test it out while cooking a couple of briskets. Come on over here. So immediately you do see the smokestack that I have added to this. Um, it's kind of janky. I did buy a 24 inch. Um, I cut a four inch slit up the back so that the dampener could fit. Um, I don't want to do anything permanent until I can see that this actually works. So this is a $12 solution um, for now. So uh, this is technically just raising this 20 inches instead of the full 24. Um, so that actually gives us 36 inches from here to here which is about 85% of that length. Now, according to Franklin Barbecue, 75% is adequate. So this may provide a little bit too much draw. We will see. Open up the cook chamber. You'll see that I did clean and add belt all the way around here so that no heat or smoke escapes through there any longer. Now I do have this flat iron um, because when I do smoke hamburgers, I like to sear them off on this. And right now I've set it right over my heat deflector and I'll show you why. See those holes down there? Um, these holes are going to help heat come up. Now, generally, let's talk about why, why I did this. Generally, this heat is deflected in a certain way to where the heat comes down and it's underneath great level until it comes up to the smoke exhaust. The reason I know this is because when I cook a brisket right here, the bottom is burnt to a crisp. Um, and it's not because I'm overcooking, it's because the heat is staying down here. Now I've seen a lot of guys take and cut that heat exchange in half or take it completely off and that allows uh, the heat zone to be you know, started right about here and coming up and over. Uh, but then you don't have a whole lot of heat down here. Um, and, and with both of those methods, you're getting a lot of heat right here. This is kind of a microwave area. It's blasting over the top and nothing under the bottom. And I wanted to do something that would kind of mitigate having a cold zone all through here, but allow the hot zone, the microwave spot, to be right here where my uh, griddle plate goes. And I think I found the solution to doing that, and that's drilling uh, those 7 8 inch holes throughout in a pattern with more at the bottom, more at the distal end, uh, farther away from the fire box um, than uh, closer. And that's going to allow more heat to come out this way, but it's also going to deflect it enough to have heat roll under and over, causing a good amount of convection. And that's what we want. Convection, air movement, energy, heat. That's what cooks evenly. That's why we trim briskets evenly. So there's one, two, three mods. And of course, I added some felt to our firebox doors as well. I didn't have enough to do the back, but this is kind of warped anyway, so I don't know what good it's going to do on this side. So with all that being said, guys, I think it's time that I uh, put my money where my mouth is and try it out. Uh, we've let that gasket sit overnight. Um, you want it to sit for 12 to 24 hours before you use it um, in the pit just so that weight of the pit will settle and it's able to seal correctly. So 
that's been done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw some B&B lump charcoal into my uh, chimney, get it lit up, throw it in the firebox, and throw some splits on there, and get this thing heat, heated up. I know that's a word. It just sounds so weird. Heated. So we got our fire started. I did go ahead and push it back to the back and threw some logs on there. And uh, it's got a pretty good lean. There's a little bit of backdraft going on, but uh, it's a pretty windy day. We've got about 10 miles an hour constant wind blowing right now. Um, and so I figured this would actually be a great day for that test because of that. Um, because we're in West Texas and it's always windy here. But that fire has a great lean to it. And that's really really what I was looking for in this so from what I understand uh, with some of these changes you can close this door up and open the vents all the way and have good fire management that has prevented quite a bit of the uh, return in the smoke and uh, the, the smokestack seems to be doing well it's only been about 10 minutes so I don't know if there's enough energy or heat generated on that end of the smoker to really convect that energy across there yet, but I believe it's getting there. I'll check back in in about uh, 15 minutes and see how this is going. So after, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes or so, um, <clears throat> we're coming back to check on this and there's absolutely no smoke return coming from the door. Our pit's running 305, 310, somewhere in there. Good clean smoke rolling out of there and uh, you probably can't tell it because of the way I've got my mic situated, but there's 10 to 15 mile an hour winds coming across this way. And it kind of whips around in here. Everything's looking really good. So I'm going to add another log to this, and I'm going to move the camera over to the chamber side and see if we can't capture any um, flames or see, see if there's any movement there um, so that I can show you kind of... Uh, the new way, um, new convection, new draw, and all that good stuff. I don't know if we'll be able to see many flames. There are a few flames kissing through. There's a dry spot in the grease on the grate right there, right above where this is. And that tells me that that heat is dissipating this way. And because all this is nice and sheen, has that nice sheen where it's been warmed, it's been heated, and I can see it all through there. And that tells me this entire smoker, this chamber, is getting heat dissip dissipation uh, and convection throughout the whole thing. Now, there's more scientific ways to check that with some probes and things like that. But um, it's kind of been played out. But uh, get that closed down. It was at like 305, 310, something like that when I opened it up. I'd also like to throw... A couple of more um, gauges, one over here and one over here, just to see how well they do uh, and how accurate they are across the board. But uh, we're going to let that keep raising up, and here in about 10 minutes, I'm going to throw some briskets on here, and we'll keep watching. Okay, we're going to load these briskets up, we're sitting right at 315 or so. I always like to start a little over 300. And then let it level down to about 275. Keep it there for a while until the wrap. At the wrap, I crank it back up to 300. I'm going to put these on the back side. That side up. Point facing the firebox. When you're doing two of these briskets like this, um, you want to do them in such a way that there's room for air to move between them so that there's even cooking all the way around. So 
we're going to shut this down and we're just going to watch this fire like we normally would. Um, feed it as we need it. I expect to feed it with these split sizes. Um, I don't know, every 20, 25 minutes uh, with a split. I found this smoker likes splits eight to nine inches long, um, two, two and a half inch diameter. And uh, I'll see if these modifications change that any, but uh, we'll keep monitoring it. We'll keep it steady and I'll keep you updated, see how it goes. It's been about five hours since I've talked to you last and there's a reason for that. Um, the wind has picked up to almost 30 miles an hour consistently since then. Um, this is the clearest it's been all freaking day and I'm still getting pretty good gusts of wind. Um, there is trash blowing around from areas I don't know where it's from. Tumbleweeds the size of Christmas trees flying over um, and it's been kind of a nightmare to work in and it makes running a fire a consistent fire pretty difficult as well but I have noticed something with this baffle and uh, stack um, addition modification whatever you want to call it uh, combo is those splits that I used to run that were about nine inches long maybe ten inches long I was getting these um, pieces left over like that and I saved those for my ugly drum smoker or whatever so I'd cut them down with a miter saw and then I'd split them in half so they were just about like that. Well now I'm finding that with this um, stack extension and the, the baffle plate holes, the modifications that I've done, this split um, is about a third the size that it came. I took it and split it twice with an axe. But 12 to 14 inches is what it likes to burn right now and it's keeping pretty consistent tips with that. So. Uh, kind of a cool thing to notice, but I've also noticed that with my brisket, it's almost ready to wrap. I don't want to open this up quite yet uh, because the wind is picking back up, and I don't want it to be full of dirt. But um, the brisket is not crispy on the bottom. It's getting a nice even color all the way around it. Maybe a few hot spots on the edges uh, where that that hot air is is hitting this side and backing up. But uh, <laughs> the wind is crazy, guys. Um, but other than that, I'm very, very happy with these results. I'm definitely going to do this again with a pork butt uh, on a more calm day. So if you're looking into this, if you're thinking about doing this, or if you're thinking about buying a Pecos, like I said, um, I've used multi-thousand dollar smokers. This thing is cheap, brand new. I bought it for $200. Um, I put $50 in modifications for it, and it's burning really, really nicely. Um, I'm going to slowly do more and more things, but this is probably going to be the nicest smoker uh, anybody could put in their backyard for under $1,000 with purchase and modifications. Um, for under $1,000, you'll have a two or $3,000 value pit for sure because the performance is awesome. So I'm going to keep uh, I'm gonna keep at this. I'll let my fire die a little bit. I should have added this before I started talking to you all, but um, thank you guys so much. Hope you have a good uh, happy New Year's and uh, be safe. Uh, get a ride if you need a ride. Drink a lot of water. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Thumbs up. Love you.